Helen decided she might as well be honest with herself. The suspense was getting her down, but if she didn't find out one way or the other pretty soon, something was going to snap. It'd been over six years since her foster brother Ted had left her for the Orient on that government mission just before Pearl Harbor, and he was still out there somewhere between Manila and Shanghai, alive or dead. It was a terrible thing to admit, even to herself. But she was even wishing now for any kind of message, even one stating Ted was dead. At least it would end the waiting. At least it would be better than not knowing at all. George, please, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Ted's been on my mind for so long. Now that I wish I could forget about him for a while. I'm rather surprised to hear you say that, Helen. Oh, I know it sounds terrible, but George, it's been six, almost seven years of waiting and not knowing. Yes, I know, Helen. I can't stand it much longer, George. After all, he's my foster brother. Don't you understand all these years of silence? If they'd only tell us something. You must realize there are a lot of women like you, dear. It's just one of the terrible things about the aftermath of war. That's all. Let's just wait then. Let's not talk about him anymore. I'm your lawyer, Helen. There's some things we've got to talk about. All right. Go on, George. Well, it's been almost seven years now. If we haven't heard from Ted in another four months, he'll be legally declared dead. What does that mean? There's a clause in your foster father's will, Helen. When Ted dies, the entire estate goes over to you. Why must you always throw that will in my face, George? Why must it always come around to money, money, money? Every time we talk about Ted, it's the same thing. I don't care about the money. All I care about is having him back alive and well. Oh, please go, George. If it doesn't have to be settled till September, let's not talk about it till then. All right, Helen. George? Yes? I, I'm sorry I blew up. I, I guess I'm just not myself. Sure, Helen, I understand. This episode of a generic radio show was brought to you by the letters E, as in E for erection, as well as the fine members of the Virginian Ku Klux Klan, Joseph Stalin, a homeless man we found on the streets of Detroit, I mean Hamilton, and the Quebec Nazi Party. Until next time, Alayu Akbar.